This evening, I would like to say a few things about a common misconception about archaeology. Sadly, even among some university-educated individuals, there's the notion that there's nothing left to be discovered in archaeology. This suggests that the great discoveries of the 19th century, in other words, of the Victorian archaeologists that adorn places like the British Museum, the great discoveries in Babylon or Nineveh, or of Schliemann in Troy, those are things of the past and that archaeology really doesn't amount to much now. Is this true? I say it is definitely not true. First of all, archaeology has progressed considerably since the Victorian era. Archaeology today has a range of techniques that can be used to develop questions that the Victorians never would have dreamed of. For example, because of the state of the art at the time, many of the early discoveries in ancient Iraq, which were known by the Greeks as Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers, were simply deriving information gleaned from biblical sources to determine what city they were digging. And many of the questions revolved around proving the truth of the Bible. Now, this is not a bad thing considering the state of the art, but there are a number of other questions that archaeologists are developing today. This includes aspects of ancient agriculture. The ancient cities in Iraq needed vast amounts of farmland to support enormous populations. And by combining our knowledge of the ancient languages and texts with information about crop practices and also botanical evidence recovered from sites, archaeologists have pieced together a very complicated picture of what crops were used by what people at what time. It also shows the importance of things like irrigation agriculture. Not all the great achievements of antiquity are great cities and wonderful art that now adorn Western museums. Some great engineering feats like canals are still located in the network where they were created to support the cities. These questions were far beyond the kinds of things Victorian archaeologists were interested in. And we also have to remember that Victorian archaeologists did not have things like absolute methods of dating, like carbon dating, to get a clear picture of exactly when the civilizations they were excavating existed. We also now have a range of analytical techniques that can do things with perhaps little excavation. Varieties of methods of using electrical resistivity or ground probing radar to delineate structures that perhaps would not be worth excavating. Obviously an ancient palace is worth excavating, but a number of outbuildings used for agricultural purposes, perhaps only a test trench would be useful to determine the ground truth of outbuildings. There are also issues about ancient technology, craft centers that would have produced ancient glass or ceramics. These things were very dimly understood by the Victorians. Many of their books were written in a sensationalist manner, which although they did sell many copies and many people were interested in archaeology because of this, they were not in any sense of the word a modern archaeological report that gives detailed attention to small finds that would have been discarded perhaps even on a daily or weekly basis. It's these small finds that are so important for dating ancient structures. As an example, if Schliemann, as he was excavating Troy, 
would have understood exactly where he was on the site, he would have paid more attention to the relatively small and unimposing remains of the Bronze Age. His aim was to recover a Troy as described by Homer, but in fact, he didn't know it when he saw it. This sad fact led to him spending very little time in these most important layers. And it has meant that modern archaeologists had to go back to the site and re-excavate to try to get some idea about the Troy as mentioned in the Iliad and Odyssey. If someone says that there's nothing left to be discovered in archaeology, they might be referring to important cities of, say, Italy or Greece, in which case that would be a gross oversimplification. However, there are many parts of the world, Central Asia is a good example, where very little archaeological research has taken place in a systematic way. During the Soviet occupation, these areas were far-flung areas far away from the center of the empire. Today, they're independent countries that are relatively more easily accessible by international teams. Who knows, frankly, what is waiting to be uncovered from the third millennium or second millennium BC in Central Asia. There are tantalizing glimpses that these areas contained mega cities with huge populations and would have supported vast areas of farmland. There are many questions that we can transpose from the Near East into Central Asia, but there are no doubt many other new questions we can ask about these civilizations in Central Asia that we haven't even thought of yet. Also, increasing attention is directed to civilizations in Africa as well as the New World. It seems as more and more evidence is coming in, the earliest peoplings of the America has to be pushed further and further back. And with genetics taking such a prominent place in research now, who knows what we can find among modern human populations in these areas. The future really looks so bright for archaeology, the only difficulty is narrowing down the field enough so that the information can be understood by both specialists and the general public. There's much left to be discovered, and in fact, in the future, no doubt there will be many, many more questions to be addressed as new analytical techniques are used to look at material from both well-known civilizations and perhaps civilizations totally unknown to us now. Thank you very much.